Arr, matey, swashbuckle ye swagger. That's right. We're talking about open API applied to OData on this episode of On.net. You don't want to miss. Hello, and welcome to another episode of On.net. Today, we are going to add a little bit of swagger to OData. And I've got my friend here, Hassan, who's going to tell us all about it. Hassan, welcome. Hi, Jeremy. How you doing? I'm doing great. So we've done a few episodes on OData, and we covered some background on what it does. We talked about endpoint routing, but there's some new functionality I think you want to talk about today. So why don't you walk us into to what this is all about? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the most important thing uh, when you are building an API is your ability to communicate the capabilities of that API to the outside world, to both machines and people. So developers, you know, developers who are familiar with trying to integrate with an API, let's say sending emails or making payments, or whatever the case may be, um, it's very, very common today that the common contract between an API, you know, integrator or a consumer, an API developer, is this Swagger. So, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Swagger, just to you know, for people who are not familiar with Swagger, to give them a little bit of a um, overview what Swagger is and why we need it and why it's important and why it's really a fundamental part of being able to integrate it with OData. So back in 2010, you know, uh, with the revolution of, you know, APIs and, you know, web communications and integrations, when the world started to get away from SOAP and WCF and technologies like these and started to move into more agnostic features and agnostic technologies, um, a lot of people started to think about one common language, agnostic language that both machines and humans can understand. And they came up with Swagger. I don't know really so much about the history behind the name, but I think it's a pretty cool name. And and um, what, what Swagger basically is, it, it tells the developers that want to consume an API, you know, what are the capabilities of the API that you want, they want to work with, what they can and can't do, what are the limitations, and very detailed description about each endpoint and what, what the expected request may be, whether it's a post or a put or a get endpoint. So that's, you know, that's what Swagger is. It helps people integrate with APIs without actually having to look at the source code, knowing what the capabilities are. So if it's a proprietary service, they don't have actually have to look into it, you know, and know what the code is doing. It could stay proprietary, it could stay closed source, but still be able to integrate with it and, and benefit from it. So basically, so, hmm. to, to frame this uh, sort of uh, for the WCF days, when we had the simple object access protocol, right? When you name your protocol simple, well, you yeah. know it's probably going to be anything but. So we had WSDLs, which yeah. was a web dis service discovery language, I think. Yeah. And we had clients, because it was a known format for describing the API, you could point a client at it and just auto-generate. And people loved it, right? People were doing APIs all day long, just right-click, generate my client, let's go to town. But with REST, there was no, there's no standard, like there's a convention for how to use REST, but I don't know if your endpoint supports X, Y, or Z. So am I correct in, in sort of drawing, I know it's not exactly the same, but this is sort of like a WSDL for REST endpoints. It's not specific to OData. Very, yes, very, very similar to WSDL. It's not specific to OData. It's actually, today we're talking about Swagger with OData, just to tell all the engineers out there, the people who are excited about OData, you could still expose your OData endpoints and tell the world about uh, your your OData capabilities without having to um, like like ideally because OData fundamentally changes how your uh, API uh, routing works. Right, a lot of people have been running into you know the question of how how do I enable Swagger here? I want to expose my API. You know, some endpoints will enable OData, some some endpoints don't. So this is what we're going to be focus on, focusing on today, how to enable Swagger in your ASP.NET Core 3.1 API in a seamless, simple way that just makes you able to put your endpoints out there without any problems. OK, so you've lived up to expectations in the past when you say simple and seamless. You showed us some demos that were, were pretty simple and straightforward. So I'm excited to see what this looks like. 
Absolutely, absolutely. So let me, um, so let's just um, set up uh, the, um, let me just show you what I have here. I have an existing application. It's a very simple application, it's called SchoolM. It's basically a school application. It has the integration with, with the storage, it has the integration, you know, with all of that. And it also enables OData, as you can see here. I'm gonna start just simply by running the application just to show you that the application actually can provide information. Why not? So I'm just gonna click run here and go to my um, Postman real quick. Here's Postman. Here is my Postman instance. So this is the endpoint here. I'm just gonna change this time. I'm just gonna go ahead and say, since this is a Git, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, give me the ID instead. You know, so it's gonna hit that endpoint and then it's gonna basically select all the IDs of all the students that are in the database. So we know that we have a functional OData uh, enabled API that actually works and actually pulls information. Now, a lot of people wanted to add Swagger to that and they ran into some problems because OData is different from anything else. Let's go through the normal route of enabling OData on a normal API without, without having actually all data running in there. So what, they, what, what what people basically do is that they go and say, this, this is my services, and then I want to add Swagger, Gen, right? Obviously, we need to, to bring in the dependency in here. Luckily, there's only one dependency that we want to bring into this, which is basically the swashbuckle ASP.NET core. So let me just go in here real quick, close, turn off my solution here, and then go to uh, manage my NuGet packages. I already have it. Search for in here. And so then, Swashbuckle is a NuGet package that enables Swagger. Yep. Uh, exposing Swagger basically in ASP.NET yep. Core. Yep. Exactly. So we're just gonna go in here. Go ahead in here. This is the this is the normal. There is nothing else related to OData in here. We're just enabling uh, Swashbuckle for uh, Swagger for our project. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install this library in here. Should be pretty straightforward. All right, so as soon as I enable this library, now there's a couple of things. I want, to, like normally, even without OData being enabled, you want to go and enable uh, to add Swagger generation, right? So I'm going in here, and then in here, I'm going to describe, you know, what my Swagger document is going to look like. Swagger basically provides versioning, what the title of your document may be, and many, many other things that it might take us multiple sessions to talk about it. Since we're focusing about enabling Swagger and allowing Swagger to work with OData, I'm just gonna keep it really, really uh, straightforward and short when it comes to this. So I'm just gonna take um, uh, the Swagger document. I'm gonna say this is my first version. And in new open API information in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and say the title of my document and all of this, I'm going to show you what, what all of this look like uh, as soon as we start running the application. So this is obviously version one, like I said, and then the title here, I don't know, it could be literally anything. I'm just going to call it my API, right? Now so this, this is open API is an actual standard that Swagger plugs into, right? So yep. Swagger's sort of a, a way of implementing open API, if you will. Yep. Yep, absolutely, and okay. it's actually and it's actually a, a an official Microsoft library. Like we, as Microsoft, we actually provide that uh, natively. If you actually simply just go ahead to the definition here, you'll see that this is something that we officially support. We want it to come out of the box. We want it something that supports our ASP.NET Core API. So this that's the first piece. Now the second okay. piece here. Uh -huh. So the second piece in here is that we want to go and enable the Swagger API. Uh, sorry, UI. Right. So first of all, I want to add in in here uh, the usage of Swagger using a a middleware. So the middleware basically will intercept any communications and try to uh, render these communications into a document. And now I want to put that document out there. So I'm just going to go ahead in here and say use Swagger UI like this. And in the Swagger endpoint, I get to decide which endpoint that's going to be loading my Swagger document. And you get to do whatever you want in here. Um, from a standardization standpoint, you could just go ahead in here and say Swagger, like historically speaking, if you want people not to look around too much, you could just say um, mm -hmm. Swagger.json, which is basically where everyone would be looking, right? Uh, exactly the same way when people say, okay, where is the help? 
it would be slash API slash help. And if that, that was a little bit, okay, showing my age here a little bit, but that was back in the day, people said, you know, slash help, it should give you all the information that you need, maybe status, maybe health about your API. So normally without OData, that would be enough for us to actually run OData with, with Swagger. So now if I run my application like this, and I'm gonna have to uh, use a browser this time, because um, uh, what, what's basically happening is that you can't view Swagger uh, properly through Postman unless you want to render HTML and stuff. So we want to go in here and just basically say slash Swagger. That's all I have to do. If I click like this, an error occurs, right? And why? Because uh -huh. it's not compatible. It's not compatible with OData. What well, the coming part is the part that's a little bit. Mm, you know, we're working on, you know, making it a part of the middleware and whatnot. What we basically do is basically we add formatters because basically Swagger doesn't know how to add formatters for OData. We need to add the formatter for OData type, right? And it's a little bit of um, a complex code, but it's not too complex. And I don't expect people to remember it off the top of my head, of their heads, and I don't remember it either. What I'm going to do here is that I'm just going to add a simple um, method. And I'm just going to go here and say add for matters, right? And add for matters basically takes in the service collection, right? So this is a service collection. So far, so good. One tiny part that's a little bit complex, but everything else should be fine, which is basically to go ahead and add these for matters. The code for that is a little bit, a little bit big, but what it's basically doing is that it's looking for this type and it's adding it, you know, as a media type to your formatters. So there's output formatters and input formatters, and I'm gonna show you in a second, as soon as OData starts rendering, you know, what these formatters are doing and why do they understand, you know, how to render a, an OData document. Let's just pull in a bunch of dependencies in here, which is basically Microsoft.NET HTTP headers, not system.NET, Microsoft.NET. So I'm gonna add this part in here, and then we probably need system.link because that's what off type is offering. And then obviously the OData formatters, which is, Microsoft out of the box or data formatters. This is the only part that's a little bit icky. <laughs> Other than that, the risk should be pretty. You, you had me scared. I was thinking this was going to be lines and lines of codes, but it's, nope, but it's, it's pretty it's, straightforward. You have an output formatter and an input formatter yep. that understands O data. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and now I'm just going to pick up that add, add for matters in here and just put it all the way at the top. I'm passing in the service state. So after I did my swagger work, I'm just going to add in the, oh, sorry, not this one, the services collection. So all the way up here, and then I'm just going to pass in services in here. Now, are you ready for some magic? Let's, let's, let's do some magic. So I'm just going to run my application in here, and immediately it's going to understand that this is your library, and this is actually OData, and it understands the formatter. So here is my web page. And if I go back here and say Swagger, Moment of truth, ta-da, there you go. So now you can actually render, even though the um, the endpoint that actually has OData enabled is this guy, and this is where the formatter piece that I'm talking about, it's actually basically renders you know, all the possible formats that you may need to render an OData endpoint. Like right now, if I say try out and click execute, you know, um, it should render, it should actually render all the OData stuff with the OData context, with everything else in between. Um, one, one little tiny thing about this. So basically for people who have existing APIs and they want to add OData to it and they want a, their APIs to actually still support Swagger even though they have OData, that's the way to get it going. Unfortunately, there is still some attempts around making you able to actually pass in OData queries. That's not something that Swashbuckle offers today out of the box. There has been a lot of great attempts but since 2018, you know, with, with the original ASP Web API, but this is still not something that you can get out of the box. But for people that are um, basically wanting to maintain their existing Swagger documentation, in addition to having endpoints that support all data, that's simply the way to do it. So basically, our, Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go our, ahead. Ba our basic uh, CRUD, like create, read, update, delete endpoints, get auto-generated. You get a UI that not only lets you explore the API, 
but also let you experiment with it. You can actually inline test it. And what you're saying, though, is if I wanted to test like a complex query, let's say filter students, only draw back a couple fields, et cetera, that's not as, as readily accessible yeah. through the Swagger definition. It's giving us the basic get students, but all the permutations of queries are not necessarily uh, – part of that, but that's something that an OData client, for yep. example, would easily recognize and be able to yep. work with. Absolutely, absolutely. And, um, you know, just just to give it a try out, you know, if I go and just, I want to show people that you're still maintaining your um, existing functionalities. It's just a simple endpoint that searches for a student by their ID. Boom, put the ID, here's your student, still has the OData context, the formatters know what to do with it. Everything just works. This is very important, Jeremy, because you know, for a lot of people that have some, you know, 20 APIs and they want to add this one tiny functionality to the top of it, this is a game changer for them because a lot of people might say, you know, if I can't expose my API, I can't sell my endpoints, I can't sell subscribers, I can't have people integrate with my endpoints until I can show swagger. So it might deter them away from using OData. But now that you that you can see just simple steps, you could actually put it in there you know, and make it work. It should make everything simple. It should make everything work for them. So I have a, a request. I know this UI is generated for you and me so that we can understand the API and do that. But without the UI, there's still that swagger.json endpoint, right? And that's what the actual specification is. The UI is just eye candy built on top of the that JSON document. Can you pull up the Let's see. JSON document? I think you need like V1 slash. Yeah, yeah. 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 Actually, it may have a link to it. Yeah, in, there's in, a link in, to it right there in the UI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Yeah. So we don't have to parse through all of this, but this is what is provided in a JSON format. So if I had a client that wanted to read and understand what the capabilities were, this is a known format that it can now parse through this JSON document and understand. Yep, and I have seen I've seen multiple. Um, so it, regardless of the language, whether you're using Java, JavaScript, or whatever the language may be, you know there are now you know standardized parsers that can go through this and build the client for you out of the box. Like like I said, it's just like Wisdle, it's like the WCF, except that it's more agnostic and it's more um, um, flexible. Than, than WSDL and, and these previous technologies for SOAP and whatnot. That's awesome. So it increases the surface area of accessibility to consume O data. Absolutely. That is awesome. Thank you for, for sharing this with us. Absolutely, sir. Thank you so much. So you've got another tool to add to your O data toolbox. This was Swagger, Swashbuckle, Open API. Lots of great terms, great technology. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of On.net. Hi, I'm Jeremy Lickness. You've watched another episode of On.net. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss a show. And if you're interested in more shows, check out the link right here. Thanks.